Okay, let's get started making our butternut red lentil soup. So what are the ingredients that we need to get started? We need a butternut. These are about maybe $1.50 or so in the grocery store. I happen to grow this over the summer. Uh, these are uh, butternut squash is a type of winter squash. Winter squash are a little bit harder um, in terms of the outer coating, so they last a lot longer. Um, so I've got quite a few left, so I'm going to have soup all through the winter. And you can just roast butternut actually if you just wanted to have butternut um, and use it as a uh, as your carbohydrate for the meal. The good thing about butternut is it is a source of carbohydrate. It's very low in calories, so you can eat a lot of this, a lot of fiber, fills you up, and you're not getting a whole lot of carbohydrates. So it's good for people with diabetes or people just trying to eat uh, less or fewer carbohydrates. You're going to need um, yogurt. I happen to get. Uh, this type uh, skier yogurt it's an Icelandic yogurt but any type of plain yogurt Greek yogurt or regular yogurt doesn't matter um, I'm using a 2% fat yogurt so it's a little bit higher in fat than non-fat because I think uh, the soup I want it to be a little bit more hearty but if you are trying to watch your calories certainly you can use a lower fat version you need a red onion uh, you need a little bit of olive oil, and it doesn't matter if you don't have any olive oil, you can just use regular oil. I just like the taste. I happen to have uh, vegetable stock. You can make your own stock. You can use chicken stock if you want, but I wanted to make this mostly a vegetarian dish. Uh, you need uh, a little bit of uh, either parsley or cilantro. This just came from my garden, a little bit left over. You need a package of red lentils. Um, you can get the brown lentils. The green lentils tend to be a little bit tougher, uh, so I like it to be a little bit um, easier to eat. And we're going to make that in just a second. And I wonder if you guys will recognize this. Probably nobody has seen this before, unless you're a farmer. This is garlic, and this is exactly how it grows out of the ground. So I just happened to have um, someone that gave this to me, that they grew. And then you need spices. You need uh, coriander. You need, uh, this is just salt and pepper for taste. And of course, um, you can control the amount of sodium salt that you put in. If you are trying to really reduce your sodium, you've got some kind of condition, maybe hypertension, um, and you can just eliminate this, or just add just a little bit, and just put a little bit of salt on your individual serving. That way you can reduce the amount of sodium. You need paprika, this is smoked paprika. You need cumin, and you need turmeric. So let's see if I covered everything that you need on here. Yes, I have. Um, there are some uh, equipment needs that you're going to have to attend to. I'm going to use a crock pot. Now, you could just use a regular pot. I just like to use a crock pot because I like to fix things well in advance and go off and do what I need to do. And the crock pot's going to uh, cook this nice and slowly so that by the time I'm ready to eat it, it'll be ready. Whereas if I had to cook it on the stove, I have to watch it, make sure it doesn't overboil or overcook or something like that. So I'm using a crock pot, and this is a very low-tech crock, crock pot, so I know there's a lot more fancy ones. Mine just has two levels, low and high, and I'm just gonna use the high one. Um, you need a measuring cup and a, an immersion uh, blender. So I'm gonna use this to blend the butternut squash once I cook it. Um, you could use uh, a, a, a blender. Uh, obviously that would be um, more messy to do. And if you don't have any of that equipment, you could use an old fashioned fork and just mash the, the butternut squash once it's cooked. Uh, you're gonna need a knife and just a few utensils for stirring and peeling. So things that most of us already have in the kitchen. So let's get started. What's the first thing we wanna do? Uh, by the way, um, obviously we don't have enough time to be on the video and cook the entire um, soup uh, in the limited amount of time we have, so I'm going to be editing this out. But what you want to do early, and you could have started this well in advance, is to go ahead and add the um, vegetable stock to the crock pot. Okay, this is four cups. That's part of the ingredients, which um, I can send to you. 
and it actually calls for four and a half cups, but we'll add that later. So we use that to determine um, whether the soup's too thick or too thin or whatever. Now we, we're going to need um, about a cup of red lentils. So I'm going to open up this bag and I'll use my cup measurement. Take the top off and I'm going to measure about a cup. Well, you know, the good thing about soup is nothing's exact. So, you know, if you wanted to make a little bit more, you wanted to make a little bit less, you can do that using all of the same ingredients. So I'm just going to add a cup. I'm going to add that right here. Lentils cook pretty fast. They're not like regular um, beans. It's more like a pea. So in the crock pot, it's probably going to take about um, two hours. If I did it on the stove, it would probably take about uh, 30 minutes or less. So it just depends on how you want to cook that. So while this is cooking, and I have it on high, I'm going to go ahead and get the butternut squash ready because that is the next item that takes the longest amount of time. Okay, and we don't need to add any spices or anything like that yet. So let me get all of this out of the way. Of our spices. We're going to do our chopping a little bit later. And we're going to prepare our butternut squash. So squash is a little bit uh, tough and it is um, difficult to cut. So you do have to be very careful. And one thing you want to do is to make a nice flat edge so it's easier to cut. You want to just cut the bottom part of the squash. Okay, so now you have a nice flat bottom and it can sit up just like that. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, great. So this is just going to end up being garbage or you can compost it if you have a compost bin. And um, what we're going to do is we are going to shave the skin off before we cut it, okay? And you can just get a regular uh, uh, peeler, and as long as it's nice and sharp, and we can just start to peel the skin off, okay? Now, while I'm peeling this, um, let's talk a little bit about the nutritional value of this soup. Why do I like it? Why are we cooking it? First of all, it's a very high... Um, nutrient dense food and that means that it's very low in calories relative to the amount of nutrients you get. So you fix this soup and you basically have most of what you need for a meal. It's got a good source of protein, it's got um, a great source of vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin C and it's got a lot of great minerals like iron and zinc and magnesium and of course, the one that's excellent for high blood pressure, potassium. So butternut squash is, soup, is an excellent food to serve. Plus it, it tastes good, right? Okay, so we're gonna peel this part. Now you could, um, you could bake this uh, with the skin on, uh, but it's just easy for me to use it without the skin. Now, for those of you who don't want to do this step, and you've probably seen this in the grocery store, they already have butternut squash uh, already chopped and peeled for you, and all you have to do is put it in the oven and roast it. It takes about, I don't know, 25 to 30 minutes to, for it to get nice and soft, because what, what we're going to do is we're going to um, make this into... Um, more of a very soft texture. And we're gonna whip it up with a little bit of the juice from the lentil soup. And then we're gonna add that to the soup, okay? So it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be nice and sweet. It's got a nice little sweet flavor to it. And it's gonna be a nice accompaniment to the kind of nutty flavor that the lentils provide. And of course, I, I love lentils. They are, again, low in calories and very high in fiber and other nutrients. So the combination of the butternut squash with the um, lentils is excellent, and they really go well together. I'm just going to put my trash 
in this bowl. Of course, if you compost, this makes a good compost for the next year. And I do compost, so we're going to add this to that. And now we're going to set this like this. So be very, very careful. And we're going to cut this down the center, okay, as much as possible. wasn't so easy. Now, look at there. We've got the seeds that we need to remove. And I'm actually going to keep the seeds. Now this recipe calls for um, a smoked almond garnish that you can put on the soup when you serve it. But instead of using smoked almonds, I'm actually going to roast the seeds from the butternut squash. So if you've ever had pumpkin seeds, um, those squash seeds are very similar in taste, and that's how you use everything that you have, right? And so very, very little of it goes to waste. So there's quite a few seeds in here, which I'm going to rinse in water and let dry a little bit, and then I'm going to roast it in the oven for about 10 minutes with a little bit of salt and oil, and now they're going to add a nice, crisp, uh, nutty flavor and texture to the soup once it's all done. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to take out the seeds to the pulp. The other thing that you could do with this butternut squash, um, if you didn't want to make soup with it, is you can use it to hold um, a mixture. So for instance, if you wanted to um, take some turkey meat and uh, mix that stir-fry with uh, vegetables. You could add the turkey meat, uh, ground meat to this and bake it and it makes a really delicious uh, meal that uh, presents very, very well. Okay, so we're gonna put these seeds on the side and we will roast those a little bit later. So let's go ahead and now that we have our our squash, it's nice and prepared. We can uh, cut it up. I'm going to start my oven. It needs to be about 350 on bake. So let's put it on bake. Start. And now it's preheating and I'm going to add the butternut squash to this red pan with a little bit of uh, olive oil in it so it doesn't stick to the pan. So we just want to, you know, we don't really care about the consistency of the squares that I'm going to cut simply because it's all going to end up um, blended anyway. However, when you're baking, you want things to be relatively the same size because you want them to uh, bake at the same uh, speed. Okay, so if you have one chunk that's very large and one chunk that is very small, um, they're not uh, ready at the same time and then that if you have to cook it a little bit longer, you've got some squares that are very soft and some that are firm. So consistency in size is uh, fairly important when you are making. So let's go ahead and do that. Very careful to keep your thumb and your fingers away from the sharp knife. Okay, so let's put this on the side. And now we are going to cut this into cubes, basically. So this is just an example of the size that we're going to use for the pan. So we'll just drop that here in this red pan, this here. And let's finish cutting these up. Um, what I like about the soup is as I'm um, making this, it, there's going to be enough to last for you know, two, uh, three days, depending on um, the number of people that you have or how hungry you are, I guess. So it's nice that I can spend the time cutting and, and making this now, and then later when I don't have as much time, I can just grab and go. So this is something that I would possibly bring to work with me. Um, and so I don't have to worry about, you know, what I'm going to eat or rely on, you know, some of the less nutritious food that you might find um, 
in some of the uh, fast food places that are always available and ready for you to purchase. Okay? And especially during the holidays when, um, you know, we're eating fairly high calorie, low nutrient dense food. It's good. There's nothing wrong with doing that occasionally. Uh, you need something to balance it out with, right? So a good hearty soup is a good way to do that. So I'm almost done. Put that in there. So each of these is relatively uniform in size. I wouldn't win any contest for um, cutting them in a way that's beautiful. But again, as I said before, you don't really need them to look exactly the same simply because we are going to be chopping them and stirring them and making a pureed um, consistency. And this is great for all members of the family, right? So, um, you know, for small children who cannot uh, choose something that's uh, chunky, or even to somebody that's older who may not have full use of their teeth, uh, this is a great uh, dish that everybody can enjoy. And it has so many nutrients in there that you hardly would need to add or to include anything else. Uh, sometimes I might add brown rice or quinoa just to uh, you know have something maybe a little bit with a little bit more carbohydrates but you don't need it and if you are trying to lose weight this soup is a great way to do that because it's very filling and it's very low in calories so now we have the butternut squash ready I'm going to just drizzle a little oil on top and I'm going to mix that together so it's nice and coated. And the butternut squash doesn't either stick to the pan or burn too much. Okay. All right. So I'll show you a picture of this so that you can see it. And now we are going to put this in the oven and for about 30 minutes. All right, I think the squash is ready. So let's go ahead and check. Find my oven mitt. And then we will take this out. And we will check and see if it is nice and tender. Stir that up a little bit. It looks beautiful. We can kind of smash it ourselves. Like I said, you don't really need to uh, have a special tool in order to uh, puree this, but it helps. Oops, I just want to make that away. Now I'm going to let this cool. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and saute the onions and the other um, ingredients that we have. We're going to put them all together. So we need to turn our fire on. Actually, this one. There we go. Nice medium heat. And I have the olive oil. I'm just going to add enough to cover the pan. Um, I generally use about two tablespoons worth. And I have my red onion. Now the recipe calls for red onion, but you can use a yellow onion as well. The taste is not really that much difference. Generally, you use red onions raw, right? Because the color's pr pretty and it's got a nice pungent uh, flavor. Um, but I could have easily used a yellow onion. Uh, I'm sure the red onion probably contains certain types of phytochemicals that are, are excellent for you. But all onions do. Onions have a uh, lot of fiber and they add a nice pungent flavor and uh, they're very good for uh, digestive health. So we're going to add that here to the olive oil. I'm going to stir and I'm going to let that um, kind of 
kind of uh, saute until it becomes a little bit clear. And meanwhile, I will turn that oven off. Uh, we're also going to add uh, a lot of spices. I've got uh, about two teaspoons of cumin. I've got two teaspoons of uh, coriander and a half teaspoon of turmeric. I have um, two teaspoons of paprika and I've got, I've just added my own amount, about a teaspoon or two teaspoons of black pepper. What's interesting about spices are, you know, they add a lot of interesting flavor to food and they're very, very healthy for you. Uh, herbs and spices come from plants. They can come from the leaf, the stem, uh, any part of the plant and they're usually ground, uh, they can be fresh or they can be dry. Of course, I'm using dried spices, herbs and spices. And the herbs and spices contain a lot of antioxidants and other what we call phytochemicals, plant chemicals. And what those substances do is they help get rid of dangerous substances in the body. Um, many of those substances that we are exposed to in the atmosphere, just naturally, are uh, carcinogenic meaning that they can spark a cancer cell formation. They can, they can take a regular cell, but they can make that cell uh, rapidly develop and now obey the laws of nature. And so those cells turn into tumors, and those tumors interfere with the rest of the body processes and do something um, called cancer, which is a wide variety of different, of different diseases, not just one type of disease. And these spices, including the vegetable onion, and we're also going to add garlic. Um, they seem to help the body get rid of those carcinogenic substances. So I know you read a lot about these substances on the internet or your friends tell you about them. They're not necessarily magical, but they um, do provide some protection to the body. So, you know, from a public health point of view, we want you to use them in your food, use them for taste, don't worry about the fact that, you know, I need to get more because it's going to help me prevent cancer. It doesn't really work like that. If we did, somebody would have developed a drug by now to get rid of cancer. But we do think that they do play a role. So by all means, use them. They add a terrific flavor to food. And it's really for our enjoyment. The side benefit is that they probably have some medicinal qualities. So we're going to continue to uh, saute this red onion until it is ready. I think the onions are nicely sauteed. So now I'm going to add the tablespoon or so of garlic. And again, garlic has lots of medicinal qualities, just like the onions do. Um, but we don't want to cook it too long because it's a little bit more delicate than the onions. It adds a great flavor to food. Lots of nice flavors. We're going to go ahead and add the spices to this mix. And, you know, the spices, um, as I said, have been dried. And they're, they're delicate, so we don't want to uh, overdo it in terms of heating it. We just want to do it enough to mix all the ingredients together. Okay. So now we've got a nice mixture. It's beautiful. And we're going to add this to our pan. Bowl, because we're going to make a puree now out of this. Okay. I'll set this aside. And I'm going to, so you can see it here, it's actually actually very beautiful. And it smells so good. And now we're going to, oh, it's a little hot. Let's see, I need to get my spoon. We're going to go ahead and add the, um, the butternut squash. So I'm just going to add that in here. And the recipe calls for about four cups, and I, although I did measure it, it ends up being about four cups. But again, as I said before, it's not an exact science, 
So you just add whatever it is you have. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. squash and the onion mixer here and now we need to add some liquid to this so that we can blend it well. So we're just going to skim off the water. See it's just the water from the top and we're just going to add that. If you get some of the, the lentils in the mix it's fine. We're just going to make that nice. Remember we're going to add this right back here um, once we're done. And I need to kind of mix that around. Kind of make a slurry with like that. And frankly, I probably want to use a little bit more water just to make sure that this mix is nice and nice. Well. So we're gonna close that again. And meanwhile, our lentils are getting very soft. To let that go. and I'm going to turn on my immersion blender. Let's see. back to our soup, our lentil soup. Set that aside and I'm going to use my spatula and I'm just going to add this to the lentils. And this is where you can decide um, whether you like the consistency. 
this has, is going to have to continue cooking um, probably for another, because it's a slow cooker, probably for another hour. But if you had done this in the, um, on the stove in a pot, uh, you might not need as much time. Now there's one last thing we have to add that's going to really make this soup delicious and nutritious, and that is the yogurt. So let me continue to mix this so we get a nice consistency. And I haven't added salt or any sodium to this, so this is where you could add um, your salt once you taste it. Or as I said before, for those of you who um, are watching your salt intake, you could actually leave the sodium out and just add a little bit of sodium uh, or salt to your individual serving or use something like Mrs. Dash's or some kind of salt substitute. I don't really need to watch my salt intake, although I do. Um, watching your sodium intake is really important for everybody. It's not just for people who are salt sensitive or who have high blood pressure. There are other problems with um, too much salt, like bone loss and um, maybe blood pressure, blood pressure regulation in general. So I'm going to take another spoon and I'm actually going to taste this to see where we are in terms of the lentils. So it looks absolutely beautiful. It's already actually really, really, really good. Oh my goodness. But it probably needs to cook, like I said, another hour. So I'm not going to add the yogurt just yet. I'm going to wait till it gets a little bit softer and then I'll add the yogurt towards the end. All right, we're almost near the end. So a couple of things we have to do first. I went ahead and cleaned out all of the squash seeds and they're fairly dry. And so now I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil, just a little bit, maybe half a teaspoon. And I will just mix that around, just enough to coat the seeds because we don't want them to burn. We want them to roast, okay? Kind of make a nice little layer. I put the oven on again at 350. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to that. Most of the salt is not even going to be on the seeds. Okay. And of course you're going to leave the salt off. And I'm just going to bake it here in the oven. Now, you got to watch that. Now, this is a time when you don't want to leave the kitchen. Because these are going to be roasted probably in the next five to seven minutes. So in the meantime, while we're doing that, I want to talk about a couple of things. One is my scraps. So I had quite a few scraps, right? This is skin of the butternut squash, some of the pulp from the inside where the seeds are held, and some of the onion peeling. I don't use the outer part of the onion because it's too tough, but anything else uh, I can use. I'm gonna post, uh, compost it. You can get a compost bin like this, something small, fit right on your counter, or if you don't have the space, you can even have just a little small container in your refrigerator. But I'm gonna put these um, scraps in here and I'm gonna close the compost bin. And amazingly, uh, and it, it has uh, ventilation, so air circulates. This actually is not gonna smell, but it's going to start to compost. Now what I can do, what I usually do is I get a cup of dirt and I'll put it in just so, you know, just in case there are bugs and things, they won't bother it if it's covered in a little bit of dirt. And I'm just gonna leave this here on the counter for a week or so while I get other vegetables and things like that that I'm not using and then I'm going to take the compost that I have collected and I have a nice big compost bin uh, outside. I do have space for one. I know some people don't have them but usually you can take your scraps to a local farmers market. Just google it wherever you live. Why am I interested in composting? Am I just that um, 
nutrition oriented. Well, 40% of the food that we are consuming in the United States is thrown away. It ends up in our um, uh, garbage, and that garbage produces all kinds of dangerous gases like methane, carbon dioxide, of course that is part of those greenhouse gases that are causing the earth to warm and causing havoc all over the United States in terms of storms and things like that. So really, we need to be much more conscientious about the amount of food waste that we are uh, producing. One is that you use as much as you can, right? So almost everything that um, I used today um, in making this soup, I um, used in some way, form, or the other, right? The, the seeds are cooking, I'm using all the pulp and some of the peeling in, in terms of compost, and I actually grew the butternut squash um, and also this parsley, which I'm gonna use as a topping. So um, I'm gonna cut this just into just some small pieces because this is gonna serve as a topping for the soup. And I'm actually gonna cut more than I normally would because I collected this. And I'm actually gonna save the amount that I did not use. Um, I'll put it in a baggie and I'll just put it in the refrigerator. So I believe our soup is pretty much ready. And let me tell you, it is absolutely delicious. What's interesting is I had not added any salt to this when I tasted it. And for some reason I thought that I had. It has a nice sweet flavor to it because of the butternut squash, but it has a great texture because the lentil, uh, small lentil peas are still intact. So now we're gonna add the 3 fourths cup of Greek plain yogurt. And as we talked about before, um, I like to have a little bit of fat in my yogurt. Um, you can use non-fat, but the um, full fat yogurt just adds a little bit more heartiness to this. And this is such a low calorie dish, adding a little bit of fat to the three-fourths cup of yogurt that I've been used is not going to uh, make that much difference in terms of the calories. So it's beautiful, and we're going to add that here to the butternut squash soup and lentil soup. And I'm just going to stir it. It doesn't have to be stirred um, completely. You can kind of have a little bit of the white streaking throughout, and it creates kind of a beautiful uh, look. It makes the soup a little bit lighter in color than it normally would, but the addition of the um, yogurt adds enough calcium so that you are getting um, a serving every single time that you eat a cup of butternut soup. And as we know, osteoporosis is still a problem in the United States. Um, uh, that's where the bones are brittle. Uh, the other issue is um, that calcium has been shown to help reduce blood pressure, so it's a good thing just to have in your diet in general. Now, something that I'm going to add that is not part of the recipe is I always put a little bit of cooking sherry whenever I make soups or sauces or things like that because it just adds such a unique flavor. The alcohol will dissipate so you're not getting the alcohol. You don't have to worry about giving this to people that don't drink alcohol or, or your children. The alcohol does um, evaporate but the flavor of the sherry stays behind and just creates such a unique flavor. So I'm just going to add really, it's probably less than a quarter cup to this and I'll stir it. Of course that adds a little bit more liquid. And now we have a finished product. And as soon as my, um, as soon as my uh, seeds are roasted, we're going to be ready to taste this. All right, I think the squash seeds are ready. So let me find my turn that off and grab this. If they are nicely brown and crisp, let me just take one. Mmm. I like squash seeds even better than I like nuts. They're so good and so tasty. So I'm going to transfer the seeds to this container. And just like most of you, there are 
different members of my family and sometimes we're not home at the same time so we can't always eat a meal together and this is a great example of something that you can prepare put that over here uh, ahead of time and because the crock pot is safe you can leave it here on the counter I probably change the setting to low and so that anybody that comes in can smell it and there's a bowl here and they can just grab themselves a bowl add a little of the parsley or cilantro and top it with a few of the pumpkin seeds and have a delicious meal so let's try it I'm just going to taste a little bit put some here in this bowl the little mini bowls which I love They're perfect for tasting Put the top back on. I'm going to add just a pinch of the parsley and a few of the pumpkin seeds. And that is absolutely beautiful. Now, of course, hopefully you'll eat a lot more than this, but this is just for tasting purposes. I don't want to waste anything. Delicious. The best part, as long as it tastes good, there's no salt here except for the salt on the squash seeds, but I can feel full from this and get very few calories. This is a great way to help regulate your weight and get you through the holidays. Bon appetit.